What is going on Guardians and welcome back to another Destiny 2 gameplay video. Hey, in this video I'm going to be breaking down the Shirochi raid encounter in the new Last Wish raid that came out with the Forsaken. This is the second uh, boss, the second encounter in the raid. And this raid is incredible and many people struggled clearing this particular encounter. And we spent hours here and we got all the mechanics down really well. We got to the point where we could execute them all pretty regularly and uh, make light work of this encounter. So I'm going to share our strats and the mechanics of the encounter with you in this video. Now, the three most important things in this particular encounter are patience, clear communication, and super chaining. And these three things are your ticket to success here. So here's the basic gist of the encounter. Shirochi will progress up a three-tiered tower, stopping at six different plates along the way. Now these six plates are the only six places that you can damage her on, and all your damage phases will take place on these plates. In between those plates, you will be required to clear lots of taken adds, including Thrall, Captains, Knights, and Ogres, and you will be required to complete two puzzles along the way. Now there are some technical things in this encounter, in fact there are several small mechanics that you will have to manage along the way, and the encounter itself isn't exceptionally difficult, it's just that it requires near flawless execution of all these mechanics from start to finish. All the while, you will be racing against the clock as Shirochi will be singing a song that will eventually wipe the team when the timer hits zero seconds. You will reset that timer two times throughout the encounter, and those two resets come each at the completion of the two puzzle rooms. Throughout the encounter, Shirochi will be laughing maniacally and even throw some heckling in there, as well as target players with a one-two punch attack that first knocks players into the air and then hits them with a ranged attack that will usually take around 75% of your total health depending on your power level. This attack is pretty easily avoided as long as you are aware enough to see the circle on the ground that starts to form before she executes the pop-up attack. Now, let's dive into the encounter each phase in sequence. The encounter starts with the opening of a tall, narrow door. As soon as the door opens, Shirochi will hit the door with a pop-up attack that is basically negligible. It doesn't really hurt. Now, our team led with a tether and one rocket from me to clear most of, you know, almost all the initial wave of ads. Once you push into the room, you will turn to the left and begin clearing a few more waves of ads. We found a second tether and a roaming super like hammers made light work of these ads. Included in these ads are a few knights and one captain. They're the ones that you want to focus. The knights hurt with their AOE fire attacks and their boomers, so it's best to make sure they get tethered so that they're locked down and easily eliminated. The captain is also important in this phase and most of the other phases as well. Single him out and take him down fast. He has a solar shield, so solar shotguns or team fire in general drop him pretty quickly. When that knight dies, or when that captain dies, I'm sorry, he will drop an orb of taken essence. This is only kind of important. We fell initially into a trap of assuming that it played a major role somehow, but it's not really all that necessary until the second phase of each of the three tower tiers. It shoots a primary attack that clears adds well enough, but its main purpose is that it has a super attack that is capable of stunning Shirochi and interrupting her team wiping attack during the damage phases. And we'll come back to that in a second. So, you clear all the waves of adds until none remain. At this point, you're left with Shirochi chilling on a plate with three plates around her, each with a crystal on it. Now, she is currently immune, and you need to drop her shield before you can damage her. To do this, you must have three players each claim one of these plates with the crystals on them. Count down and jump simultaneously onto those plates and grab a crystal. Now it's important that you do it together because these plates hurt, they do damage when you stand on them. If one person is too early, they very well may have to hop off the plate before, before Shirochi's shield is depleted or risk dying on the plate. Once your three plate people jump up together and grab a crystal, you must then shoot your teammates on the other plates with the crystal. The easiest way to do this is just to pick a direction. We played by the rule of always shoot the person to your right. So grab a crystal, turn to your right, hold down the trigger on the person to your right, 
So you end up making a triangle with the beams, basically chaining it from one player to the next and to the next. After a few seconds of holding this beam, Shurochi will make an audible audio cue that the damage phase is about to begin. Her shield will make a visual change or rotation of light beams that then disintegrate and open her up to attack. At this point, it's good to have one player tag her with a melting point uh, sunbreaker melee attack. This will weaken her significantly for the damage phase. We also had a warlock using the Well of Radiance super for the damage phases, and our team consisted mostly of sleeper simulants for damage as well. Sleeper does massive damage, and it's relatively easy to hit crits on a boss at point blank range uh, with it too. Whisper is much more difficult to use because of how close you are to Shirochi, and the fact that she moves around a lot and waves her, her hands in front of her face, uh, often interrupting the crit chaining needed to make Whisper good. Sometimes she won't even face the front. She'll face some random direction making crits even more difficult to land with a sniper. We found shotguns and sleepers were the best for damage here. I was one of the players using a rocket launcher for easy ad clearing and dropping groups of knights and most everyone else is using sleeper simulants. So during the, the damage phase, you have to take out a sixth of Shirochi's health. Once you've done that, she'll flip uh, her hood back on, It'll, she'll flip her hood back over her head and go immune to all damage again. So that's sort of your visual cue to, okay, it's time to move on. Now you switch back to ad clearing, you turn to your right to continue on to the next five damage phases. And there will be several knights, usually to the right, and one taken ogre in the far back left as well as several thrall. So drop a tether, don't rush up too aggressively. The knights are your primary concern. If you tether them, they're no problem. Otherwise, they like to hit you with, uh, you know, they hit you first with their fire attack. It causes you to, to try and jump to avoid taking damage to the fire on the floor. And then they slap you with the boomers while you're in the air and make pretty light work of a player. So you go down pretty quick to their attacks if they single you out. This could cause uh, this could cause you to lose a revive token and also waste precious time that you'll need uh, later after the damage phase. So single out the knights, eliminate them quickly, and then focus on the rest of the adds and the ogre in the back left. Once they go down, grab whatever orbs you can find and make sure that you go forward with some super energy cooled down. As you continue looping clockwise around the base of the tower, you will come again to another section with lots of adds including thrall, knights, and one captain in the back left as well as another damage phase plate with Shirochi chilling on it, throwing her pop-up combo attack at players. At this point, it's much the same as the previous damage phase. Clear the knights, kill the captain, the captain will drop an orb of taken essence, and a final wave of adds will spawn around Shirochi's plate for you to clear. Once you've cleared them, you now need to manage two things. One is the plate crystals to drop her shield, same as before, no difference. The other thing that you need to take into account is what you have available for the damage phase. Some people may be low on heavy ammo. One person may not have a well of radiance, although they usually should again by this point with the orbs made by teammates during the ad clearing. And some people may not have a melting point ready either. So if you're low on damage phase tools, you may need to dedicate one player to picking up that taken essence dropped by the captain. You may need that person to, to wait and use the super attack to stagger Shirochi during the damage phase if she starts to charge up her team wiping attack, giving your team more time to damage her and clear the next bar of health. But note that this person should not pick up the taken essence uh, until people are on the plates with the crystals dropping her shields. When you're holding the Taken Essence, you'll see a debuff on the left side of your screen slowly accumulating stacks. Once you get to 10 stacks, the Essence will kill the holder. The only way to drop the Essence and purge the debuff is by using the super attack. Picking it up too early could be costly if the holder dies before they're able to stagger Shirochi. Once you've cleared the next bar of health on her, you will now turn to your right and move into the heart of the tower where there's a three-part puzzle for your team to solve. There are many ads in this room that will continuously spawn during this section, and it's best to split into two teams. You need a team of two players strictly focused on ad control and four players who are responsible for jumping on plates. The ad controllers are super important because there are taken phalanxes that spawn in this room and can seriously jack up your run with one successful boop attack. 
so memorize the spawn locations, pull out a shoddy, and drop their dumb butts. Now, here's where things get slightly confusing. Now, there are nine plates in the center of the room. Now, treat the center of the room as if it is lava. <laughs> Add controllers do not go there. They do not jump over them. They do not step on them. They do not walk in between them. Touching a single plate at the wrong time could be very costly for you and your team. Let's break this down. Here's a diagram of the layout of the room. On the left, you have the hallway that you entered from. In the middle, you have nine plates. And on the top of the diagram, you see a blue circle labeled one. On the right, a blue circle labeled two. And on the bottom, a, a blue circle labeled three. These three circles represent the three circular stained glass windows or pictures high on the walls of the room. You start by going into the room and looking up to the left to see circle labeled number one. Now this picture will be incomplete. It will depict a creature of some kind with portions missing. Now the picture is broken into nine sections, three rows of three. You must find which portions are missing and then fill them by jumping simultaneously, that's important, onto the four plates corresponding with the four missing sections. For example, this picture here is missing the four corners. So the four corner plates are the ones that you need to jump on. At this point, your four plate holders are going to call out exactly which plate they're going to take. Once it's sorted out and no one has called the same plate as another player, you count down and you all jump onto your plates at the same time. Hold that position and then wait for the picture on the wall to complete and flash brightly indicating the command has been accepted, which is also indicated in your feed, your information feed on the bottom left of your screen. Everyone should then dismount. These plates are just like the plates the crystal holders use during the damage phases. They do hurt you. So make sure you jump on simultaneously. Now, here's the catch. No player can activate a single plate more than once. So if three jump on and the fourth is late, then those three will have to dismount the plate before they die from damage and then shuffle which plate they're going to take and attempt the input uh, of the command again. If you jump back onto a plate that you've already touched, the plate will reject you as a user, it will light up red. It's very, very important that if something happens and the command is not accepted, that you all dismount from the plates, take a second, and reassign different plates to each user. This is very, very unforgiving. This is the thing that, that, that slows down or just completely halts most people's attempts at this encounter. Many things can go wrong here. You could miscalculate your jump and land on the side of the plate and fall off of it. And then when you try to get back onto it, it will reject you because you just grazed it seconds earlier. Or an ad controller might fail to kill a phalanx. And as your team is jumping onto their plates, one of them could get booped by a phalanx and it might activate, you know, as you're flying through the air, you might graze three more plates and you know as you're flying through the air and, and, and that makes you unable to use several plates for the rest of the puzzle now everything has to be executed flawlessly and in the run that you're watching now we actually had to dismount because some someone had activated the same place twi same plate twice we had to calmly reassign plates once it's it's possible to come back from a failed plate activation you just have to remain calm and communicate clearly after you have successfully completed the first puzzle picture and your command is accepted, you must all dismount from the plates and then work on clearing ads together. While clearing ads, you have to keep an eye on Shirochi's song timer. Make sure that you have enough time to complete the second and third puzzles. Sometimes we had to do all three puzzles in 20 seconds or less and we managed to pull it off. So you just have to be consistent with your rhythm and your callouts. Clear ads, look at picture number two. Start calling out which plate you're gonna take and make sure you do not call out the same plate that you just stood on in the previous puzzle. So, if on the first puzzle you took the top left plate, A1, that means that in the second puzzle you cannot take A3 as that is the same plate that you just stood on previously. Does that make sense? Call your plates, count down the jump, jump on together. If the command is accepted, then dismount and clear ads while calling out your third and final plates. If the command is not accepted, dismount together. Calmly reassign plates 
Now taking into account the two plates that you've personally already activated, count down again, jump on. Once the second command is accepted, you must shoot the ads prioritizing the phalanxes and then claim your third plates for the final puzzle picture. Count down, jump on together, and hopefully no one is double dipping on plates and the command is accepted. Congratulations, you've made it through one third of the encounter. And once the third command is accepted, Shuro Chi's song timer resets. At this point, your head may be spinning, and that's okay, <laughs> okay? The good news is that at this point, you've learned almost all the mechanics of this fight. It's very repetitive. You're basically gonna do that same thing, one full more rotation, and follow it up with two more damage phase plates. Rinse and repeat, and once again, basically without the third puzzle room. There's only two puzzle rooms that you have to do, there's no third one. So you do the two damage phases, puzzle room. Two damage phases, puzzle room. Two damage phases, done. At this point, the oratory half-sphere shapes hanging in the room will spin, creating a series of platforms for you to ascend to the second tier of the tower. Before you ascend, look around the room for heavy ammo and orbs of light. You absolutely need these going forward. The jumping is easier said than done. The half-sphere platforms will rotate, kicking everyone off of them, so wait for them to reset and then ascend again if you don't make it all the way up. Once you get to the top, a few phalanxes will be there in true bungee fashion, ready to toss you back down. Once they're taken care of, you will start wrapping now counterclockwise up to the left of the tower. This is rinse and repeat of the first two damage phases. Wipe the adds. Single out the knights and the captain. Once the adds are clear, three people count down and jump onto the plates around Shirochi together. Shoot the person to your right with the crystal. Shirochi's shields will drop. Hit her with a melting point, drop a well of radiance if you have one, and go to town on her. Once you've depleted the next full bar of health, she will go immune to damage. Turn to your left. There will be a bunch of scions staring at you ready to kill you. Clear the adds and the taken knights that will be on the staircase towards the back. Look up to your left. There will be a taken ogre. Focus fire him and eliminate him. Take out the captain and the remaining adds. Take note of your supers and your heavy, and decide if you need the essence to stagger Shirochi during this damage phase with the essence super attack. Once her shield is dropped, stack up and lay into her with everything you've got. This damage phase is crucial because you're likely low on heavy ammo and you might be down a DPS super or two, so make sure on the way up to this plate you're collecting all orbs made by your teammates. If you go hard enough and successfully take her fourth health bar down entirely, she'll go immune to damage. You must rush into the second puzzle room in the oratory on your left. Clear ads. Look at how much time you have left on her song and start calling out plates that you're going to be responsible for. No one can activate the same plate more than once, so be careful not to repeat. Complete the first puzzle. With the correct command, jump off the plates, clear the ads, call dibs on your next plate, count down, jump on together, hold that position until the command is accepted or declined. Jump off, call your plates, move on to the third puzzle. Jump on together, hopefully your command is accepted, if not, dismount and reassign plates. Once the third puzzle is completed, the third command is accepted you will once again be given platforms to ascend and your timer will reset. Now, here's where things are a little bit different, but also largely the same. Look around the puzzle room. Grab any and all ammo and orbs of light you can carry. You have a good amount of time here, so no need to rush too much. The time that you have on her new song is only across two damage phases without a third puzzle. So you have extra time for those two damage phases. Ascend the platforms, take out the phalanx trolls, and start clearing adds. Same as every ad wave before this one, clear the knights and the captain, and eventually the last wave of adds will spawn around Shirochi's plate. Kill them. Three players count down, jump onto the plates, grab the crystals, shoot the person to their right. Shirochi's shields drop, hit her with a melting point and maybe a well of radiance, and go to town. Once you've taken out her fifth bar of health, leaving only one more, this is where you basically move into a sort of final stand. You will wrap around clockwise at the top of the tower now and come to a final section where Shirochi is in the back left, 
and more adds than all the previous rounds will start spawning. Again, it's more adds than the previous round, so don't push up too far. You can't afford to go down here, especially if you can avoid it. Stay back. Clear the adds. Absolutely have people making orbs of light here. It's very important for the last damage phase that you have your well of radiance or whatever high DPS supers you're using on the boss. I actually immediately switched to Code of the Commander after the fifth damage phase ended. I knew I would get enough orbs of light during this final ad clearing section to get a super up. And sure enough, I snagged all the orbs that my teammates made, and I had a huge sentinel shield ready to go for that final damage encounter. Manage your time well. You might run into the situation we did. You might run into the situation where you don't have time to clear all the ads before you need to get to those crystals and start popping her shield for the final damage phase. That's why I went code of the commander because I intended to pop my super shield and shield my teammates with a giant sentinel wall from ad fire while they grabbed the crystals and stood on the plates. I was just going to stand and block all damage so they could do that without getting shot by ads. I figured I could block all the incoming ad damage and then once her shield is down I would just turn around and stand uh, at the front of the well of radiance and allow my teammates to shoot through my shield doing extra damage, right? Because they've all got sleepers on so me throwing up my shield is actually me helping do more damage than I'm doing with my shotgun anyways. So as it turned out no more ads spawned this particular time because we'd cleared them all and we had enough time to clear her final health bar with a few seconds left on the clock without being pestered by ads. So congrats, at this point you've cleared the encounter, you'll get a reward drop, and Shirochi will be taken back from the Taken, <laughs> and share a little dialogue with your team before you progress to the next section. All in all, the encounter from start to finish is about 10 minutes and some change. It's not overly difficult, it's just highly technical, and requires good execution, patience, communication, and good super chaining. The encounter is highly repetitive and learning the mechanics should not take long since it's just repeating the same actions over and over again. Dang. I know that felt like a lot, but this is a highly technical raid. It's beautiful and it's fun, but dang is it technical. Thanks for watching. I, I really appreciate it. Good luck clearing this epic raid, Guardians, and I'll catch you in the Dreaming City.